they say everybody's coming back uh, with you know uh, I'll, I'll read just a line from that a little later to give you before I hand to the mic to Shivanaji to talk about her experience with her mother. Rinki, you made a very good point, you know, like in the last couple of years, uh, if this book gave Rinki, Rinki and Maitri and all the other uh, contributors this thing about somehow going through the pandemic and making through it, give that sort of thing. For me as an editor, it was even more like that, you know, like I was at an event last week in Kolkata and I was thinking that these two, three books that we have published in the last in the last few months, and which we work in the worst phase of the pandemic, is what actually kept me, kept me sane, you know, kept me looking forward to a day like this, probably. You know, so it's, it's if the editors and the authors have actually put that much uh, work and survived this as an editor, as a publisher, we've also sort of gone through this phase only on the strength of books like this. So one of the things about this book, and I'll come to that, is, is as Matthew said, it is not all sugar and spice and everything's nice sort of thing. And you know, uh, Shashi Deshpande's uh, uh, first essay in this book is, you know, we learn about motherhood, about being mothers from our mothers. And what were the nuggets of wisdom I picked up from my mother? I learned that a mother is like God. I learned that a mother is constantly sacrificing herself for her children. I learned that a mother is one's refuge. I learned that childbirth is painful but joyous. I learned that love springs naturally and spontaneously in you. I learned that a mother can never be unjust or unfair. And was that the reality? I saw, even as a child, that mothers often tire of their children. That sometimes they're so tired that they say things like, Oh God, what do you want now? And why don't you go out or even get out of my sight? This is that sort of a book. It's, it, it takes in the experience from all perspectives. So we'll talk about all of that. And Deepa's essay is one of the most brilliant essays in that book, which addresses this aspect of you know not being a mother. But I'll come to uh, Shabana Ji. Shabana Ji, the first line of your essay is, her fragrance preceded her. Cuss in the summers, in the rains, Shamavatul Ambar in the What a beautiful way to describe one's mother. Could you please talk to us, tell us about your experience? But before I say that, I, I think this uh, essay is as much a testimony, a testimony to both Rinki and uh, Maithili and their immense persuasive powers as it is to the subject itself. I think to write about your mother and to write honestly and to write succinctly is uh, can only happen, for me at least, when a deadline is pushed in front of me as Maithili did. Shabana, you have to do it now. Okay, so Shabana sat up and started writing. And I wrote it in one go. You know, my uh, my relationship with my father is a very celebrated one. But the fact is that I had an extremely intimate uh, and a very warm relationship with my mother, Musa, who was quite remarkable in many ways. And so when I just picked up Penny Pinter, the first thing that struck me is that her fragrance preceded her. She was a woman of great aesthetics and I always associated <coughs> uh, with her. So it came from that. What I find quite remarkable about my mother is that in every way she was, you know, a complete homemaker. She was a, a very good wife, a very good partner, a very good mother. But at no point did she let that get in the way of her work. So she was one of those women who managed to create space for herself and her own identity and yet she was able to do all these other things. I remember once when I told her, I said, Mommy, what is it that you, uh, when you look back on your life, uh, what do you think is the most satisfying thing that you've done? And she said, my, you know, she didn't say my husband, she didn't say children, she said my acting. 
And that's what I, what I find really, really quite, quite remarkable about her. And, and the fact that, uh, like I've said in the essay, she was, she was blunt to, to a point. I mean, she could put, put you really in trouble, which you will know when you keep it. Your, your, your experience of the reaction to Fasna was great. No, no, but for that, I have to first say what she said about me, Nankur, only then Fasna. Okay. So this mother of mine, this actress whom I admired a great deal, saw my very first film, Ankur. And uh, she was sitting a couple of rows before me. And she turned around, she saw the film, and she just said, Shabani, you're a very good actress, and I'm very proud of you, and this is a very good film. And I sort of sat into my chair, that all kinds of people are looking around, ki kya hai kya hai, kya bol rahi hai? Anyway, two months later, I took a very confident film to another film that I've done, which is Fast Love. And exactly with the same tenor in a voice, she said, Shabani, itni bebuda film aur tumne itna bebuda kaam kiya hai, ke agar tumne mujhe ye film pehle dikhai di hoti, to mein tumhari, to mein tumhari shaadi kisi langde hule pehle se karte di, lekin film industry pe nazil nahi karti. So she was exactly, you take it or leave it, that kind of person. So she was not one of those Nirupa Roy characters from Hindi films, I can tell you. And, and also she uh, didn't quite uh, uh, take it, uh, take your uh, tantrums uh, very well, you know, she could put you down on your tantrums also you mentioned in one case about I don't know whether I mentioned that in my head. Oh my god, I've opened up all my secrets in this book, I don't Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, that's not, no, no, that's not the, uh, the, the, the real uh, incident which is very beautiful is that there was a period when I started becoming very rude because I felt that my mother loved my brother more than me. And so I was behaving very rudely and so she called me. I was nine, imagine. And she said, what's your problem? So, uh, why are you behaving so rudely? So, I said, because I think you love Baba more than you love me. So she says, see, I'm your mother, but I'm also a human being. You're a very rude and obnoxious girl, and that's why I don't like you. Your brother is, that's why I don't like you. Your brother is a very well-behaved and a very gentle boy, and so obviously I will react to him like that. So imagine if your own mother reacts to you, what will the world do? with you if you continue to be in. Let me tell you from next year onwards I gave up all my rudeness and everything. And then when I tell her, I say, Mom, how could you have the guts to say that to a nine-year-old child? I could have been decimated for life. She said, I didn't even think about it. Because today's parents would say, oh my God, it's the inferiority complex which I need. Mean. Because she was so steadfast in the love that she had for me and that she had grounded me with, that she could be totally blunt. And so if any of your children are behaving rudely, let me tell you, follow Shokat Kerti. Shivanandi has a great line there, it says, her mother told her, it's good you learn early in life that emotional black men with never work. <laughs> Coming from this wonderful uh, reminiscence, I'll come to Deepa. Uh, Mathley writes in her introduction, Deepa Gellot is the dissenting voice. Hers is a rational repetition of essentializing motherhood as something without which a woman is incomplete. Deepa, your take on and which I found really stunning that, you know, uh, in a culture like ours, somebody could actually put forward a take like that. Um, I think that, as long as I've already said, that in our culture, uh, we defy Others. And uh, because you have created this aura around motherhood, uh, it becomes imperative for women, especially married women, obviously. Um, who feel that uh, you, know, you have to have a child, otherwise you're incomplete. And what do the neighbors say? What do the in laws say? And, and quite often, they may not be prepared for motherhood, or they may not be willing to take on the responsibility. And still, it's something that is forced, uh, forced onto them. And, uh, 
the maternal instinct may not be part of their psyche, but they are expected to do it because that's what they're supposed to do. Otherwise, if they, if they don't, then society is, oh my God, the selfish, wicked woman doesn't want to be a mother. And selfish is the word described uh, most often for women who don't want to have children, or rather couples who don't want to have, uh, have children. How could be so selfish? And, and now more than ever, and I have um, ended uh, my essay saying is now more than ever, it's foolish to bring children into this world. I mean, you don't know when the child is going out, whether it's going to come back. Because there are, look at America, school shootings, there's pandemic, there's terrorism, there's war. There's a, there's a huge burden on, uh, on Earth's resources. And you want to bring a child into this, into this world. Uh, and speaking for myself, I think uh, uh, it just so happened that I had a very busy career and my friends got married before me and had children. And without exception, without exception, they would in, in their in their weak moments would tell me, Are Baba, if I didn't have this kid, I would have been, my career would have taken off and my marriage would have been happier and I couldn't have my in-laws on my back all the time. And not a single woman, my friend, I'm not talking about the whole world, uh, were happy with the experience of motherhood. They, they had to pretend to be happy and they had to pretend to be with mother because when, again that was expected of them. But if they could go back and undo, you know, the at least half of them would choose not to have children. At least from that I'm judging my work, they would tell me. And, and I said in the earlier Zoom I mean, I mean, one of my neighbors who was the one who told me, Hare, tera kya hoga, tera ta koi nahi hai, you know, you should have had children. And I said, you have children, and who's here looking after you? And she said, you know, I feel, now I feel jealous of you. I feel like you are so happy. So, I'm, I'm being facetious about it, but it, I gave it a great deal of thought, and I realized that I'm not going to, not going to be given to social pressure, I'm not going to, uh, something which ultimately is going to make me unhappy. And because of that, I think I could live a life more or less of my own choosing. I say more or less because of those other factors come into play. But uh, uh, I think I'm happy and I, I don't regret it for a minute that I chose not to have children. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you have a preface in the book, but you have spoken about.